welcome to Scottsdale Center for Spiritual Living. Glad to have you this morning. Beautiful song. I think it's perfect for our message today. And it prompts the question, have you ever felt that way? Get ready, my soul. My life's about to change. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Whether something has happened where you've made the decision, or maybe it's unexpected, that there's a change coming forth. Perhaps it's a job change. Perhaps it's a relationship change. Perhaps it's a diagnosis. But what if, what if the apparently good, the apparently bad, what if it's all a gift? What if it's all a gift? My talk today is exploring life's gifts. And it's been inspired by our movie, which is the ultimate gift that we're going to be watching after service this morning. So what do we mean when we say life's gifts? What is that? And how could any of those negative things I described be a gift? Well, let's go to Ernest Holmes, founder of Centers for Spiritual Living and the author of The Science of Mind. In The Science of Mind, he says, there is a place in us which lies open to the infinite. But when the Spirit brings its gifts by pouring itself through us, it can give us only what we take. This taking is mental. If we persist in saying that it will not give us that which is good, it cannot. For life must reveal itself to us through our intelligence. Life is a gift. Each one of us has that gift. We're sitting here, our hearts are beating, we're breathing, we have life. That is a gift. What we do with it is a choice, right? That is a choice. We get to choose to express life how we want, express our talents, develop new talents, new ways of being. Our movie is about a young man who has perhaps squandered most of his adult life so far. And his grandpa, who's wiser. Joe, do you have that trailer? You didn't get it? Oh, it was on the bottom of the slide. Okay. Never mind. You just have to trust me on this. <laughs> okay, so Grandpa is wiser, and he's passed away. And he leaves a recording as part of the inheritance. Grandpa's a billionaire. And he leaves a test for his grandson, Jason that he must complete over the next 12 months. And if he fails in any one of the tests, he gets no inheritance. Jason doesn't know what the inheritance is. He and his grandfather don't have a very good relationship. So it could be a box of coal, right? He doesn't know what it is. But here's his grandfather, who's now deceased, on a video, talking to his grandson, telling him this story. So now you have to come and stay and watch the movie to see what happens. <laughs> but today, I'm going to take us quickly through these gifts. And as I do, I'm going to invite you to consider these for your life. Consider these gifts in your life. Make some notes if you want to. We can talk about it afterwards. If you get triggered, remember I didn't install the trigger. <laughs> if you get triggered, try to move on. Don't stop there. Keep listening for the rest of them. Okay? All right. Is work a gift? Is work a gift? 
Or would a life of leisure be a little more your preference of a gift? Have you noticed when we're unemployed, we want a job so bad? Or when we're employed, I need some time off. Is that human nature? Is work a gift? What if we approached every hour of work, whether it is going to an office or a factory or working at home or volunteering someplace, whatever that activity is, what if we looked at every one of those as a gift to us? A gift to us. Now, we usually think of employment as a gift to our employer or for volunteering someplace. It's a gift to that company that is receiving you, right? But could it be a gift to us, a place where we can express our talents, express our skills, express spirit through us into the world? Could that be work? How would that change your experience? Now, when we thought of leisure there in the beginning, did you think of money? Did you think of money when I said leisurely lifestyle? Sometimes we do. Is money a gift? Is money a gift? Is it a curse? How much is enough? How much is too much? Many of us have treated and prayed our entire lives around finances. Many of us have healed our financial life. No matter where you land on this spectrum, ask yourself, is money a gift or a curse? Now, I've got some quotes that are from the book and or the movie. This is a book, a novel that was made into a movie. I'm just going to call it from the movie because it's simpler that way than kind of bouncing back and forth. So movie quote, Joe, you got one? Money is nothing more than a tool. It can be a force for good, a force for evil, or simply be idle. Would you agree? Yeah. Is money a gift? The next gift is friends. Do you consider your friends a gift? A hundred percent. Are you a gift to your friends? All right. I like it. Do you try to make friends with everyone that you meet? Do you actively maintain your friendships? Do you actively maintain your friendships? As a young woman, that was one of the most valuable lessons that I learned was the importance of investing the time required to maintain friendships and relationships. What about learning? Is learning a gift? Education a gift? Or is it a right? We live in America. We have a right to be educated. We have public schools, right? What about now? What about today? What are you doing to continue your education today? What are you doing to grow and expand your knowledge today? It's easy to just keep doing the same old thing over and over, isn't it? It's easier because we don't have to think so much and we've got so much to think about anyway. Why would I want to learn something new? That sounds like a challenge. That sounds like a challenge. Is learning a gift? Where are we choosing to learn and grow and where are we not choosing to learn and grow? Are problems ever gifts? Are problems ever gifts? Think back on the history of your life up until today, up until now. Has a problem ever become a gift? Most of us have that experience, right? That a problem becomes a gift. When we look back and we go, wow, look how smart I was. I solved that. Yeah, that was good. Have you ever received a problem immediately and gone, oh, goody, it's a problem. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Not likely. <laughs> right? Not likely. We're just not wired that way. It's usually after we've gone through the journey of solving the problem, using our creative ability, tapping into infinite intelligence, that we go, yeah, now I see the gift in that. I see what I've learned. I see what I've gained. Quote from the movie. Some people are born into wonderful families. Others have to find or create them. Being a member of a family is a priceless privilege which costs nothing but love. Anybody had a difficult family relationship? Anybody have one now, right? Most of us have at one time or the other, whether it's the whole family or that one individual, right? That pushes our buttons, that one. Do you consider them a gift? If you don't have a difficult family, if you have a, a wonderful family, those of us who don't would probably say, Gosh, that's a wonderful gift. But sometimes a wonderful family can also feel like a burden to the person who is experiencing it because of the pressure, the expectations, the requirements to maintain all of those relationships, to be present for everything, to be either a caretaker or to be a reason to be cared for by everybody in the family. That can feel burdensome. Has anybody seen the show? Um, New Amsterdam? Yeah, New Amsterdam. There's a very successful surgeon on there who has a close relationship with his family, particularly his mom. He got a new love interest, took her over, and gee, didn't last long because he kept putting mom and his family before her in the relationship. Wonderful families. A burden, benefit, gift, curse. I think most of us would agree that laughter is a blessing, it's a gift. Quote from the movie, even in the most difficult of times, a laugh or even a little smile can go a long way in helping us and others feel better. Would you agree? Yeah. Think about when this has been true for you, either as the giver or the receiver. A smile during a challenging time. Someone making light of something that, not in a negative way by any, any, anything, it just, a, a, just making it lighter. Helping us to rise above it to see that this is really going to be funny in a few years. It may not be funny right now, but it's really going to be funny in a few years. Anybody have those experiences? Yeah. Embarrassing in the moment, but funny to tell next Christmas. Do you allow feelings of compassion and mercy for your fellow human beings to rise up, to be that person, to give that gift, to be that gift for someone else? Let's talk about dreams, goals. Anybody have one? Dreams, goals? Yes, no, yes. There's a lot of them in that box. Did our burning bowl in January and we all put them in there? dreams, goals. Most of us have it, whether it's for great wealth, a loving relationship, abundant health and fitness, creative expression in the world, employment where we're richly rewarded. Is the gift in a dream simply having a dream? Is that the gift of a dream? Our dreams and desires are the creative urge of spirit pushing through us into form. I love the story um, from Liz Gilbert. She tells it in one of the books that we did in our book study. And she said she had an idea for a book and she outlined it all. And it was really a powerful idea. And then something happened in her life where she got distracted. I think it was a family illness or something. And she put that on the shelf. She took care of her business and then she forgot about it, went on to other things. A few years later, another author, a friend of hers, 
was telling her about her latest book she was publishing. Same story. And Liz said, oh my gosh, that's the same story. I had the exact same one. And so her point in her book, Liz's point in Liz's book was spirit is always giving. The creative urge is always flowing. If you don't take it, someone else will. Have you ever had that experience? Where you had an idea, but you did not take the action. And then there it is. Someone else did. Because spirit's always it's always flowing. These creative ideas, this creative inspiration is always flowing, but we're here to take action. Here we talk about treat and move your feet. Moving your feet means we take action on it. We are not designed to just simply sit still and do nothing. We're designed to take our action, to move forward, to allow things to come into expression through us through us. And we do that through our dreams. Many of our spiritual teachers over the years have said, motivational teachers have said, burning desire, right? Have that one thing you're focused on and work diligently towards that. That's the passion. That's the passion of creation. Have you ever treated for clarity, direction, guidance? Most of us have it sometimes. We've prayed for that. We've asked for that. I just don't know. Usually means we're feeling stuck. And we don't know. We don't have direction. What should I do? A lot of times we look at external. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Instead of going within and tapping into infinite intelligence and saying, Spirit, use me. What would you have me do? What divine and creative idea would you have come through me that I would do today? We allow it to come through us. Have you ever had a dream manifest? Yay you, yay. Good feeling, right? And then there's this empty spot. You kind of go, hmm. Hmm, what's next? And we start looking again, direction, guidance, what's next? That's that creative urge. We're designed to have that. We're designed to be that. The next gift is giving itself. Giving itself. Do you consider yourself a generous person? Yeah. Do you easily give of yourself? Or has someone hurt you that has caused you to put up the walls where you don't trust that idea of giving? You don't trust that idea of being generous with others. Have we become cynical? A lot of people have. A lot of people have. Every Sunday we are offered the opportunity to give into this community, whether we are volunteering with our time, our talent, whether we're giving our treasure. We're invited into that. It may appear that you're giving to the community, and you are, and we appreciate it very much. You're also giving to yourself. You're also giving to yourself you're giving yourself the gift of faith, trust, and freedom. When we give from a place of trusting spirit as the source, the source of all that is, when we have that ultimate, complete, and total knowing, just like we know we're sitting on a chair right now, and we feel confident it's not going to break and put us in the floor. We just aren't even thinking about that. When we can get that way about knowing God is my source of all good, and there are bajillion channels through which it can come, when we can get there, we give generously of all of it because we know I got to give it away so quick because it's flowing so quick. 
we step into the law of circulation that we talk about here. And it go that's not just finances. I know that when we're in church, we start talking about money. We all think the preacher wants your money. You know, <laughs> it's not about that. It's about you stepping into your spiritual magnificence like we talk about in our vision. That's what it's about. Because we can, when we can step into that level of trust, life flows. May they have life and have it more abundantly. So giving, giving is a gift. Ernest Holmes says, life is ever giving of itself. We must receive, utilize, and extend the gift. I love this. I think this is the most logical three words in science of mind for how this works. We must receive. We have a choice about receiving, don't we? Not going to do it. We have a choice about whether or not we're going to receive. But when we receive, we have to utilize. That's the idea of action. That's the idea of moving our feet. We have to utilize what it is that we receive. If you receive a whole bunch of money and you stick it under your mattress, you know, it's, only gonna, it's not going to grow. It's just going to sit there, right? You have to use it and circulate it, move it through the world. And then extending that gift, extending that gift. Use Joe as an example, and he doesn't know this. Joe Hammer is a brilliant marketeer. Marketeer? Musketeer? Musketeer. Marketeer. Marketeer. He volunteers his time and his talent and his service to this community and has for eight years. You've missed, I'm going to say five Sundays in eight years. I mean, probably about that. Maybe. He's here more than I am. He developed our website. He's, he monitors that. He does all it. Joe has talents and he's freely giving them. He's extending them to each one of us in this community. That's the idea of extension. And it's not that it's just free. It's anything that we give, that we get, that we give. Our education our wisdom, our knowledge. Your practitioners share the education that they've gone through. Lee and I have got a few years between us in, in study and service, and we continue to study and learn and grow and expand. Daniel, practitioner, he has classes that he takes. He has ongoing education he has to take. He has relicensing he has to do to stay current, to stay available, to be in service to us. Extend the gift. Extend. All right. I know we're a grateful community. I heard you this morning. I heard you last week. It seems like everybody has something they're grateful for, and I love that. I love that. It opens my heart every Sunday to hear you talking about what you're grateful for, that you're recognizing gratitude in your life that you're being present to it, and that you're willing to share that with your community here. Gratitude is so important. Just the ability to have the feeling of gratitude. Some people can't, don't, won't feel grateful. There's a mindset about gratitude, about being open to being grateful, to recognizing something greater than ourselves. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Science is even today proving what spirituality has known for centuries, that gratitude is health-giving. It's good for mind, body, and soul. So thank you for sharing that gratitude. Gratitude is a gift. Do you express that gift beyond these walls? Do you express that gift beyond these walls? All right, from the movie, life is nothing more than a series of days strung together 
and learning how to live one day to its fullest is equivalent to living a meaningful life. What does the gift of a day mean to you? What does the gift of a day mean to you? For me, it's the practice of being present. The practice of being present. As he said, it's a bunch of days strung together. Have you ever gotten to Friday and gone, what did I do this week? Right? We're going so fast. There's so much happening. And we're just sort of pinging off of stuff that we're not present to it. So being present to the people in my life, being present to my environment, being present to myself, my needs, what's happening. Being present is the gift of a day for me. How do you define being the gift of a day for yourself? How do you define the gift of a day? Slowing down to be present, though, is not always convenient for the others in your life who may be going a little faster, right? So we have to be aware of that. When we decide to be present to everything that's happening, no longer multitasking with all the different things we're doing, it may slow us down a little bit. Is that a bad thing? Could be for some people in our lives, so just be aware of that. The final gift is the gift of love. Now, some of us would argue that that is the ultimate gift, would we not? I would suggest that acknowledging the love that is, that love already is. Love is all that there is. God is love. Love is what we're created of. It's in our very beingness. Acknowledging that and recognizing that in each other not just in this room, but outside those doors, everywhere we go, recognizing that we are all love. We are all that light of spirit. We can't escape it. We can't hide from it, but we can certainly miss it. We can certainly miss it by choice when we allow ourselves to be blinded by our preferences, allow egos to get out of control, or just downright fear. Jim Stovall is the author of the book that was turned into the movie, The Ultimate Gift. And he says, love is a treasure for which we can never pay. Love is a treasure for which we can never pay. He goes on to say the only way to keep it is to give it away. So how are we extending the gift of God's love? To those who are saying no to it, no to love, how can we extend our gift of love and showing up and being in the world? Giving away love is what we're here to do. When we can start there, when we can start at that elevation, if you will, in consciousness, everything else kind of fades away. It doesn't become so important all of the negative things that are going on, we can stay up there in that love realm of spirit, of higher consciousness. We're channels of infinite love, each one of us. And I invite you to pay that love forward today in all of your interactions. Pay that love forward. Share this treasure. Meet it in everyone that you see today. So those are the 12 gifts. We got through them. And now it's time for our Practicing the Principles. And we have our Mindful Monday newsletter that goes out on Monday mornings. Reverend Lee or I will create that. And it's a summary of today's talk. It's the practices we're going to talk about that you can use and apply in your life all week as deepening into and embodying these Science of Mind principles. The first one is the question of which of these gifts is the most challenging for you? As you listen to all 12 of those, and I poked some buttons, maybe, um, as you listen to all 12 of those, was there one that was most impactful that really got your attention more than another? This week, I want you to consider which one of them it was that was most challenging, and then use your meditation and journaling time to go deeper with it. 
to discover what it is, re uncover the resistance, and heal any wounds that may be there to transform your relationship with that gift. Number two is I invite you to create a list of each of these gifts in your life and how, what they mean to you, what they mean to you, like a summary. What does the gift of work mean to you? What does the gift of money mean to you? What does the gift of giving mean to you? This might take more than a week. There's 12 of them, and it requires some thought. It's very personal. This is your very personal work. But I invite you to, to do it. I've included all of them here that if you're not on the mailing list, don't want to be on the mailing list, you can take a picture and take that with you. But these are the 12 gifts. How are they active or not active in your life, and what are you doing with them? What do they mean to you? I hope you can join us for the movie today. It is a good story, and it's a journey along the path of transformation. And it's very interesting uh, the way that it's done. I was really annoyed in the beginning, which I guess a good movie should do for you, right? It should get your emotions into it. But as it went on and on and on, um, I really fell in love with this show. So I hope you can stay with us. And, you know, we see the intelligence of Grandpa, and we see the very human nature of Jason. And we might even see ourselves along the way in there, too. So, again, hope you can join us. I want to close with a final quote from Ernest, who says, Even though you have misused this gift of life, you have never changed its nature nor destroyed its purpose. All your desires are basically good, and the divine urge within you, which impels you toward self-expression, is my nature too. The irresistible desire within me to become self-expressed through you. That's the crux to the movie. The crux to the science of mind teaching. Spirit in us, as us, through us, is us. This is a gift of life that each of us possesses. And the wonderful thing is, is that we get to choose how we're going to express this beautiful thing called life. So it is. And now it's your turn. Questions or comments? Beverly. On the um, gift of um, problems, when you think of the worst day of your life, there's a point you get when, you know, life is bumping you and kicking you and throwing you down that you just end up laughing. What else could go wrong? And I was remembering a friend of mine years ago I mean, I've, that happened to me on my worst day of my life. And um, another friend had it even worse. She got lost her job. She drove home. Her house was on fire. She jumped out of her car, went around the front of the car to, you know, go see. And she had forgot to put the brake on. And she got run over by her own car and had to go to the hospital. But, I mean, when you get to that point, you think, my God, what else are heavens that get so funny? And so, to me, that was kind of a gift that you could laugh on the worst day of your life. <laughs> Thank you, Bev. <laughs> Damita. You made some notes. Yeah, I was taking notes back there. This is a really <laughs> good talk. So, um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this movie. I love Marvel Comics. I'm sort of one of those. But anyway, at age 59, which is kind of like, what? Okay, anyway, so um, in the Eternals, there's like this whole storyline around emergence and the creation of a new world. And also in my other practices, I think about this concept of samsara and just emerging into a different world or creative process. And when you were talking about um, do I have dreams and goals? I took some notes realizing that 
yeah, spirit or God is always pushing through my consciousness, trying to give me something new to do. And will I accept it is the issue. And a lot of times I don't. (laughs) So it was really good to, you know, have that part of the lesson and to be reminded that when God gives it to me or I start to feel it emerging, to grab hold of it and or otherwise somebody else will. Okay, so anyway. Could happen. (laughs) Thank you, Demita. Who else? Well, something Demita just said made me realize that I also have a tendency and have in the past to say no when God's like, how about this? But God keeps offering. It might be different, but it just keeps coming. So I, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> have you accepted? Uh, frequently, well, like, uh, several times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Skeptical of God. I don't trust the chair. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else? Good stuff. I do. You do. Okay, I was like probably 10 years old, and I had a dream that we're going to have flying cars. And guess what? We have flying cars. So I didn't react in time. <laughs> But that was interesting. That came to me. It's like, wow. Wow. <laughs> With others, I think. It's like, wow. That I was late on the draw. <laughs> Anyone else? I will say that if you guys have not seen the movie The Ultimate Gift and you can stay, you should because it is wonderful. And if you have, are a human and have feelings, they'll be touched. It's great. <laughs> I love it. And I'm, it's been years since I've seen it, so I'm, I'm right. very much looking forward to seeing it again. And just the whole concept of gratitude. It's always a great reminder because gratitude is life-changing. You said something about it's being good for the health, mind, body, and soul. And I agree. Uh, just over the last couple of years, I've gone through some intense healing on a spiritual and soul level with my family because my dad, this Friday was his one-year anniversary of passing from brain cancer. So I had a choice when the diagnosis came down uh, 22 months before that, whether I wanted to stay in a lower vibration of bitterness, regret, and uh, those things, or if I wanted to heal through those memories, because I never did doubt that he loved me. He just didn't have the tools in this lifetime to overcome his own traumas. And um, so that was a really beautiful experience. And on Friday, I really felt him with me. And so I have a lot of gratitude for all the healing that I've experienced and for the healing of the divine uh, masculine relationship. And I'm grateful for community. Beautiful, sweetie. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Anyone else? All right. Thank you all very much for sharing. I appreciate you so much for that. Shall we pray? All right. So as we go within, we recognize that there is this universal presence. It is this thing called life. It is the one life, the one mind. It is the infinite, unconditional, unconditioned love that which loved so much that it created all that is of itself and continues to create through its creation, never being absorbed by it, never being deluded by it, always the infinite universal intelligence and wisdom, harmony and grace. And all of that is here now present in through and as me, in through and as each one of us as expressions of it. We are one in the one. We are whole, perfect, and complete in this expression of divinity, in this expression of life. No matter how uniquely we choose to express it, we are still one. We are still that love. As Ernest says, even if we've misused the principles of life, they are not changed. And so in this moment, I speak my word for about each one of us, knowing, claiming, and accepting the perfection of life through us, that the gift of life is us here and now. That each of us on this journey receives these gifts and uses them as uniquely as we are 
for the manifestation of our lives, for the expansion of community, both our families, our friends, this community, the world at large, for we are each an integral cog in the universal wheel of life necessary for this moment, this time-space reality right here, right now. Life would not be the same on planet Earth if any one of us was not here contributing our part, our unique role in life. I know for anyone that has anything on their heart this day that they seek prayer around as they lift it into this prayerful time in our community that we hold them in this light, in our love, knowing the full manifestation of that which is on their heart, that which they seek, knowing that it is done already in the mind of God. For the desire would not be there were it not planted of the divine, and therefore it is already complete. How grateful I am for this knowing, for this truth, and for the manifestation of this prayer in, through, and as each one of us. As I release it into the action of law, knowing that it is done, it is so, and we affirm this truth together by saying, and so it is.